This is Emma Laughlin. Communications intern with Farm Credit Financial Partners in 2020 marks her 25th year anniversary. A quarter of a century ago, Farm Credit Financial Partners, or as many fondly refer to us as FPI, opened for business in Agawam, Massachusetts. We began with 32 employees and the ambitious goal of innovating technology services for farm credit. Today, we have grown to over 250 employees across the country, serving six agricultural credit association partners. To help us commemorate our 25-year history, we have with us John Robinson, Business Process Technology Consultant. Please introduce yourself and explain what your current role is here at FPI. Hi, Emma. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, as a business process technology consultant, uh, really what that is, is it's, it's kind of a senior, really business analyst. Uh, so that's, you know, that's what I do. Uh, I work with our customers and our uh, FPI staff. Uh, to, uh, uh, you know, to help meet our customers' needs. And it's really coming from the, from the business perspective side. All right. So you briefly explained what that role is here at FPI, but you haven't always been a business process technology consultant, correct? Right. I've been with Farm Credit for 37 years. I started with Farm Credit when I, when I first got out of, uh, when I first got out of college. I grew up on a farm, went to Cornell, got hired by uh, an association, uh, worked as a direct lender for a few years, then went into the Springfield Bank uh, as a credit reviewer, working out of a satellite office in Geneva, New York. And then, um, you know, which was great because I got to travel uh, all over the Northeast, uh, went to every branch in every association. Uh, that was long before there was just one association or actually two here in the Northeast. At that time, I think there were 18 or more associations did that. Then I moved into uh, the uh, uh, prior approval department at the Springfield Bank, and then I joined FPI when FPI formed uh, when, during the, the reorganization of uh, the Northeast. Within FPI, I've been mostly on the software development side of things, and uh, most recently I've been working with the Salesforce and Encino projects. Well, that's very nice. Uh, it seems like you do have a pretty extensive history and plenty of skill sets to get you where you are today. I also heard that you were part of the FPI Founders Club. Can you tell listeners what that entails? Sure. You know, so a little bit of background. Uh, the Founders Club is really when, you know, the, that core of the 32 people you mentioned when FPI first started. How that came about was in, uh, in the early 90s. The Springfield District had started a project and uh, really uh, to rethink how they were delivering credit. And at that point, the Springfield District Bank uh, did a reorganization. Uh, ACAs were formed. Agricultural Credit Associations were formed. Associations were merged. A bunch of associations were merged and consolidated. The Springfield Land Bank uh, was dissolved and the assets distributed to the association. Uh, the uh, Springville Bank for Cooperatives merged with CoBank, and FPI was formed to take care of the focus solely on delivering services to our customers. And it was the first time in the farm credit system that the delivery of services, that being you know accounting and um, and that kind of stuff, was separated from the funding of uh, of the associations. So the funding went with, uh, you know, co-bank relationship with the associations. Uh, and FPI was formed at that point, customer uh, management, uh, integrated with, uh, uh, with loan accounting and general ledger and, and other reporting services. At that time, we, we moved uh, a lot of the staff retired uh, that were in the funding side of things. Uh, and FPI, you know, we, we went from around 200 employees down to 32 uh, and uh, that founders club were those thir those 32 there's still a few of us around uh, there's myself let's see who else mike paul angie uh, marie tim guy and cliff anyway there's a few of us still here uh, but know. that's what the founders that's what the founders club was uh, bill lipinski uh, who just you know just retired as our our president as he'd mentioned before he was the official first president of FPI before it was actually technically incorporated on January 1st of 95. At that point, it was Tom Moran was our CEO, uh, and he was our CEO for the you know almost the first 20 years. 
I know. Well, it seems like there's a lot of people that, you know, stick around, but I guess that just goes to show um, how successful this business is and how great people that work here are overall. I mean, I've only heard great things. And as you mentioned, there's so many people that are still part of the Founders Club that are, that are here. And um, you mentioned Bill Lipinski, and I actually ended up doing a podcast with him as well. So you, I'm sure you'll listen to that soon. But a lot of what we talked about in that particular episode was collaboration and listening to our partners and our customers and those customer members and ensuring that we give them different services, products, um, implementations that are going to help them in their businesses as well. So a lot of it is just simply communicating well. So in FBI's 25-year history, what would you say is FBI's most successful implementation or project or anything of that nature that you've been a part of? Well, it's hard to name just one. Certainly the boldest, uh, you know, really actually kind of groundbreaking uh, was our original basis project uh, where we did that, you know, in, the con- uh, in concert with the formation of FBI. You know, we had a cross-functional project team there. We worked with a consulting firm, but we also had pulled in, uh, we pulled in key employees from the associations and embedded them in the project. They, they actually left their primary job and they were they were immersed 100% in the project. And we ended up keeping a couple of those folks. Uh, Greg Smith, still with us. They came in, you know, they technically weren't FBI employees in the Founders Club, but they were right here, uh, right here with us uh, while they were association employees. So technically they're, they're or I, I shouldn't say technically, they're, they feel like they're part of the Founders Club. And it's crucial that we had people like that. And then we brought in other you know, other people that, that came in early on in FPI that are still around, Carol Millett, Sherry Leonard, you know, others like that that are, you know, integral to the system. But th- anyway, we, we started with the basis project. And that one at the time, you know, it was, you know, back in 94, 95, uh, 96 in that time frame, we moved from a mainframe system to a Windows platform, if you will, it was Windows for Workgroups, long before the Windows Win 10 or any of that. That basis product that we developed at that time was really the predecessor to Empower, uh, and it included, you know, a, cu- a customer relationship management, uh, loan origination system, legal docs, financial analysis software, WinCap, et cetera. And that system actually worked uh, with a distributed branch structure over a dial-up modem system, and uh, it was amazing what what we did at the time. Uh, and in fact, that software actually won an international award uh, uh, from the micro banker uh, on a whim. Scott Radcliffe and I ro- wrote up a entry for that, and we ended up winning. So that's a testament to the that original core of people that were that were working here and what we did with that product. So that one was that. So that's pretty cool. Pieces of that, like WinCap, that program lived for uh, in production for 18 years with. Very little uh, support. So there was some really some pretty cool stuff that we did early on that evolved into Empower, which uh, was uh, a fantastic product as well. But today we're uh, we've implemented Salesforce uh, transition to that platform. We've rolled out Encino and those implementations have gone very, very well as well. So uh, it's hard to single out uh, any one thing. I think there's a there's a track record of FPI uh, working with our association teams collaboratively and delivering successful projects and products uh, to our associations uh, over the lifetime of our company. And uh, I, I'm just, frankly, uh, uh, recently, the whole transition of our offices uh, and our data centers, um, you know, led by Bob and Cheryl and Max and John and Greg and all those guys, uh, uh, it's incredibly impressive to me how smoothly uh, our hard tech guys have managed to make that transition. And for those of us who have no idea how those uh, systems work, uh, to just have them working and working very well, even with the whole pandemic response here uh, and all of us working remote and uh, missing out on the whole social interaction side of things. But uh, but the transitions with uh, with our data center and the implementation of Teams, and I'm just very, very impressed with uh, with really every facet of FPI and the way we've been able to work with uh, our partners to to make things just work is 
is pretty impressive to me. Well, I certainly agree. I think, again, uh, I feel like I repeat myself a lot when I say this, but when I sit down with people and I talk to them on this podcast, it seems like that's a consistent theme, you know, like everyone feels so driven to keep doing this job. Everybody feels so happy and impressed with themselves and their colleagues as well. So I know throughout this time, you've mentioned quite a few people who still work at FPI. And I think that's a very admirable thing that you're not only like, wow, like I did a really impressive thing there, but you're also congratulating all the people that got you to where you needed to be as well as the whole company, which is amazing. And again, especially during this time, like we need people like that during this time who, you know, are very committed to their jobs and trying to make things work. So uh, I really value what you have to say. And I guess that leads me to my next question is, what do you think in, you know, a few sentences, what makes your job so rewarding? It, hands down, it's working with the with the folks, both at FPI uh, and, uh, you know, and uh, and the associations. The, the you know, I've been in my current role with, you know, the uh, implementations of, of Salesforce and Encino AgWorks, you've been really spoiled with the folks I've been able to work with. Uh, you know, we're working with Mags and Mariana and and Kristen and Lori and and Kevin and and Dave and and uh, Sean and Robin. It's just we've got a great great team of uh, of folks uh, in in FPI, and uh, every single one of them is uh, just. Uh, uh, dedicated to working with our customers, our association teams, and uh, as well as uh, Encino and uh, and Westman, the relationships that they that I've seen the FBI team make with the association uh, teams has been uh, has just been very very uh, it's just great. I, I'm just so so pleased with the you know the associations did a great job on. Uh, putting their teams together, uh, and then to see them working with our with our folks uh, as well as they are is just uh, very rewarding. I, I'm very impressed and uh, and pleased with the way those have been going. They're not, you know, nothing is ever a hundred percent positive in sw- swimming, but with the folks, uh, with with everybody being, you know, very transparent and and uh, responsive, uh, the teamwork is there. And together we're able to climb over any of the hurdles and uh, deliver a, a really sound uh, solution, so. Well, that is certainly true. I think, you know, one of our one of our values here at FBI is certainly teamwork and having that camaraderie and it just makes going to work that much better, especially if you like the people that you're working with and you value what they have to contribute, which I think is great. Which, again, leads me to another question. So um, just for listeners to know, before uh, JR and I started this podcast, I did tell him that I have heard that he's a very funny man. Lots of people love talking to him. So my question for you, JR, is what are some of your fondest while working at FBI? And is there any event or tradition that sticks out to you as your favorite over the years? Uh, when we first started with FPI, we had uh, brought one of the, the association folks in on senior staff. Uh, Judy Connard was her name, and Judy uh, uh, Judy was uh, nearing retirement at the time. Uh, great, great person. But she said one thing that's always stuck with me, and she said, "Listen, John, once you abandon dignity, all things are possible." So, uh, 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 so. <laughs> Uh, with that in mind, what she's really saying is, you know, you got to have fun, don't take yourself too seriously, and uh, roll with the flow. So, with that in mind, I don't, you know, telling funny stories. Uh, my funniest ones are probably not, not really podcast uh, <laughs> material. Uh, but uh, you know, some of the traditions. If we look at some of the the things we used to do, you know, Halloween's coming up here uh, shortly, and uh, I was, you know, we used to have big uh, celebration on Halloween. And in fact, the Fun Crap Committee has done a fantastic job over the years. Uh, you know, they're, they're St. Patrick's Day. They're halfway to St. Patrick's Day. They're Halloween parties. The, the far FBI band. Those things have been fantastic. I think, the, and, and I know those have continued. They're 
you know, not a little more band focused, not as much goofiness as the early days. Uh, but some of the Halloween costumes were over the years were just incredibly. Yeah, I can still remember Cliff Reed and his, as his Borg, uh, you know, th- those. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the pumpkin decorating, uh, Cindy Valentine, uh, ridiculous decorating skills. There's still a controversy over whether she cheated or not when she made the uh, when she made the uh, uh, her entry out of a, some kind of a squash. Uh, oh anyway, boy. look look just like me. <laughs> She's probably first, got the like... doggone picture somewhere of the um, winter squash or something. Anyway, it looked just she made it look like me, uh, and it, it was uh, uh, the likeness was a little too accurate. Uh, uh, so anyway. Uh, you know, we used to, uh, Tom Moran especially, used to uh, revel in making people do things, uh, you know, stretching their themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, they weren't always in your comfort zone. Uh, and, I, you know, some of that was on purpose. Uh, you know, one of the things, you know, he made, you know, for instance, he made Scott Radcliffe and I play the Blues Brothers, uh, well, the band... Well, the FBI band played. So uh, I, of course, was Elwood. We had to do do that. Uh, but, you know, that, again, we just had fun. All right. So I've heard that you were once upon a time a squash and also Elwood. So not yep. only have you had so many different roles at FBI, but you've also <laughs> <laughs> have had many a costume. Oh, um, yeah. We were Blues <laughs> Brothers, so Tim Guyon and uh, Jose Negron and I were the Blues Brothers one year. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, Scott Radcliffe and I, uh, when we rolled out in power, we, we created rockets and strapped those to our backs and ran around with blue capes. It was goofy as hell get out. But, yeah, we had fun. And well, hopefully someday I'll get to see all these <laughs> Fun costumes. Oh, and fun geez. If you want to see any of them, I know Cindy Valentine. Oh, she's I know. Any, she's if there's anything that's a, a potential uh, uh, to blackmail us over the years, Cindy <laughs> Valentine has it. All right, I'm writing that down. <laughs> I work with Cindy on the day to day basis. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Well, I have one more question for you. Are you ready? The big one. Sure. All right. So since we are celebrating our anniversary. What is your vision for FPI's next 25 years? The first 25 years, you know, there were lots of things that we did there that, uh, uh, you know, that were, that were great and groundbreaking and fun. And, uh, and a lot of it was, uh, was to, you know, keep costs down uh, with our customers. And uh, the focus more recently has been about, you know, time to market and flexibility and moving to the cloud and that kind of stuff. Uh, I, you know, in the near term, I think, you know, we're going to continue to move what systems that should be in the cloud to the cloud. I think, you know, we, we're going to continue to improve our services, especially to the remote areas of rural America. Uh, and, and, and that really is our, our mission. And, and frankly, I think that's, that's part of why a lot of people like to work for Farm Credit and, and even a lot of people like to work with FBI, even though, there's not a lot of us at FPI that have our roots in uh, agriculture. I, you know, I grew up on a farm. I know a few people at FPI grew up on farms. Uh, it's less and less than it used to be. But the focus on delivering services to rural America, there's still lots of areas where connectivity is an issue. That's going to change. That's that's going to improve. FPI has to be be there in lockstep with our associations to continue to deliver services to those folks. Uh, I think um, so. I think you know connectivity is is going to continue to improve. So we're going to again be able to continue to push services to our farmer customers uh, on location. Uh, we're going to. I think FBI will will embrace artificial intelligence uh, over the next few years. Uh, you know, machine learning, and and uh, we're going to provide better and faster services to those farmers and ranchers and fishermen for the association. There's gonna be a push, continued push towards personalization for those folks. And we're gonna to have to be able to support that. At the same time, there's gonna be cost pressures that will drive advancements in, uh, in process automation, like um, you know, auto decisioning for our associations. Um, so those are some of the things. I think 
a little further out, uh, you know, I, I, you know, we're going to have to be able to react to some, some, some pressures on our business. Uh, and I, you know, FBI's done exceptionally well doing that over the first 25 years. Uh, I'm confident, uh, we'll be able to do that, uh, going forward. I know the board, I'm very encouraged with, with Bob Pacini as, uh, as our new CEO. And, and I, I really like the focus, uh, for the right technologies with still an understanding of it's the relationships folks that really make the business work. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I think there's a balance there that I'm very encouraged with, uh, with uh, B- Bob's administration here. Uh, I think one of the things that, so a little longer term out on the funding side for our banks, I think my gut tells me there's, there's gonna be some pressures on our, uh, on our business structure from, you know, from blockchain uh, technology. I think it's going to impact our funding and the competition uh, for um, w- at the association level. Uh, I think there's going to be there's always going to be regulatory changes that we need to deal with. So that's another area that you know I'm confident FPI will be able to handle that. Um, the the big the big one that I'm not is going to require some some really uh, uh, forward thinking on the on the FPI's part is is I think is going to be um, dealing with the the wholesale funding side of things and and the impact that uh, competitors bring uh, ultimately through uh, through some of that blockchain technology. Well, uh, I appreciate the answer. It sounds like a lot of it is relationship building, keeping the robust technology that we have and, you know, getting those funds that we need. So we thank you very much for taking the time to celebrate FPI's 25th anniversary and sharing your stories with us today. You're welcome, Emma. Thank you.